powerful rains are right so we wanted to use this power of rain and get something useful out of it so we came up with this model rain hole so what this does is okay this thing here this represents the rain okay so this rain uh, when it falls down and hits this plate this small plates which you can see are known as the piezoelectric plates piezoelectric plates are made up of material like quartz crystal and ceramic certain ceramic so what it does is when it senses mechanical vibration or pressure it converts that into electrical charge so this is the output which we are getting here right now out of this pressure okay so the main issue which we wanted to solve using this was the um, efficiency of solar panels decreases during monsoons so what happens is you don't get the uh, same amount of uh, sunlight so the efficiency decreases so as in a state like goa where it rains you can definitely use that power and you know generate a large amount of energy so we want to implement this along with the solar panel so when the efficiency of the, uh, the solar panel decreases this will come handy this will work and it will give you more the same amount of output and your solar panel will work without any loss so want this will be placed where uh, along with the how yeah we how we place solar panels we want to place it the same way on Roof top off. rooftops our system introduces a rural irrigation system it's automated irrigation system uh, it is it is it can be used to any farm but it has been designed keeping in mind the needs of a rural farmer so traditionally a farmer just to water his plants has to travel long distances and even even before starting the pump he has to first check for the voltage so say if the voltage uh, if the voltage is not about the threshold voltage the pump cannot be started and say even the voltage is perfect it's, uh, everything is perfect uh, when the uh, when the watering is started during the watering period if there is a power outage the uh, it's a hassle for him, the farmer to keep track of everything so what our system does our system automates the entire process for process for uh, process for the farmer so the farmer just has to set the time after setting the time the entire process will be automated the time can be set to this app the start watering time can be set from here and the end watering time can be set for, set from here so say the farmer sets the time from say 9 am to 11 am so when the time arrives the our system First checks automatically starts. Automatically starts, but it first checks for the uh, voltage. Okay. If the voltage is above the threshold voltage, only then it will start watering. <coughs> and during this two-hour watering period, if there is any power outage, so if there is a break in watering, it means there is RTC module over here. It uh, it works uh, even without any power. It has a separate battery in it. <coughs> so uh, if there is any break in the uh, any break in the watering period, if there is a power outage, it will lock the water duration. and when the power is back it will complete its cycle so it will not even uh, over water no under water the plants <laughs> and this uh, this is uses nrf which is, which works on radio frequencies it is a range of about 800 meters so the farmer can sit back in his home and it gives it gives him extra control over the motor so we set the time for demonstration we have turned minutes to seconds we are showing you seconds so we'll set the time for 30 seconds say we set it the data goes here and from this it goes here this is a visual indicator of uh, the watering so you can see it's at two points right now it means the two points of watering are complete so if i disconnect the power you can count this as a power outage now so the power for the entire system has gone so but it has already saved the information of watered information in the eprom before the power went off so if i connect the power back it will read that information from the eprom and it will continue from where it left off so it left off at three point it is at the fourth point now So even if there are multiple power outages, it will still account for that and water. So the plants are underwatered or overwatered. Cost that comes is uh, around fifteen hundred with this both modules. And uh, if we, if they if want to only single module, the cost will be under a thousand rupees. Education should make us more sakshya mantatta shani to contribute back to society. And some of the innovations that we have seen today uh, is, has been very very promising and very very exciting because you can see. how students even at this age are thinking about contributing back to the society you know uh, and and it's amazing to do that at a student level because they are not so much about monetization it's about innovation it's about solving a problem and uh, it's been very promising number 1 very inspiring number 2 to see all the talent and uh, it just makes me feel that both goa as well as the students have an amazingly bright future
the sand battery is basically an eco-friendly project which will be taking the power like heat energy from the renewable sources of energy and then it will be directly get stored into the tank silos which will we will be constructing as a big sand battery now those tank silos will be isolated completely and inside which heat will be stored in the sand so for this small demonstration this is a mini demonstration this, these are two heat sinks and one pentium module is 6 volts each you can give a maximum of, under favorable conditions it can give 6 volts each so they are connected in series the total output will be 12 volts 6 amps in favorable conditions this is not a favorable condition right now but this is just a small practical demonstration of what will actually happen in if we scale this up in a larger scale so now we'll keep this over here and we'll uh, start to understand what the Peltier effect actually is and uh, thermoelectric effect actually is. So now what happens is in the thermoelectric effect, we will understand the Seebeck effect first. The Seebeck effect is when you take two thermocouple wires, one thermocouple wire is more has more higher electron density than the other. We take that higher density electron density one and we heat it up in one end. We heat the thermocouple wire on one end, the electrons start vibrating and they gain kinetic energy. Once they gain kinetic energy, they start to migrate to the other end of the wire. Then the second uh, wire, which has lower electron density, we do that to the same, uh, we do the same thing to that, and then we connect them. Now the cu current is not flowing, but when, once we connect the other wire, this will have lower potential difference in the uh, other one with the higher electron density. So this will create a current. The difference, potential difference, the first one is higher than the other. We subtract them, we get the overall potential difference. The same thing, the same principle is applied here. Uh, and now we are getting the output into this multimeter, whatever output we are getting. So for now it is 0.414 volts. Our highest output was around 3.5 volts today morning at around 10 uh, or uh, 11 p.m. 11 okay. When I will discard this sun, it will leave no negative impact on our environment, which is the best and plus point of this project. And this project is having low maintenance cost as compared to the existing batteries and low construction cost as compared to the existing batteries. So basically that uh, you will be thinking that only in the coastal areas or in the desert areas we can construct it, but no, it has no limitation. Wherever you want to construct, you can construct it. Just the thing is you need to transport the sand. My name is Tanishtha Rai and I am a student of Kendra Vidalia No. 1 Vasco. I study in class 11th and it was a very good experience coming over here. We could we learnt a lot of things. We saw new ways of innovation and uh, creation. We thank all the professors over here to give us such an excellent opportunity. This should happen in every school. So there are around 285 million around the world who are visually impaired, means they have a certain limitation of vision, means they cannot see perfectly. Out of that, 39 million are completely blind. They cannot see everything. So to tackle that problem, we have developed something, a product called as a third eye. Basically, there is an ultrasonic sensor which will detect that uh, it has a range of around 100 centimeters. If any obstacle is in between, it will detect the object and give you a higher head, haptic feedback. So we can come to know okay, there is an object. It also gives an audio alert. How far is that object? So that is the concept behind it. In this product, uh, right now there is a sir called Arun sir. He is a librarian. So right now he is using. So he has used. He has navigated full library, full library with the help of this. And we have the positive feedback from him. We are still uh, is a R&D phase. We are still working on it, making more better and better. So what is the cost? Oh, uh, right now manufacturing that? cost is triple nine. Yeah, so we, we have uh, right now we have not added the distributor cost plus the platform fee and all, fee and all, GST and all everything. So right now it is manufacturing cost. If we add that, it will be around 1.5 to 2,000. So, so we are working on that. Like we have the wireless headphone also and the with the wire one, so the aux cable also we are working on it. So it is in process. Maybe maybe tomorrow or maybe like further we will implement that. The GPS tracking feature also it will be enabled into it. GPS is the Suppose kithe accidents in the suppose spot hole lamka. So we'll get a feedback kite umka mobile a chibi kona notification at the home. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So thank God. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He will get a notification, okay. So umke kode ha umke kode kit zala mpon kai ha bana. So they can go and check. So that is the advantage. So we are currently working on it. 
where where he has visited like which places and also all the data will be recorded on the app which is with the parents or somebody who is guardian and he can see he can track where is going at you can use multi functional with either stick suppose this time yeah yeah stick you know. so there is a hole that also we can place it like this also in the stick or we can hold it like this also. two option is available two option is available it will be uh, it will be difficult for a normal person who is using a stick to switch from this particular yeah, device yeah. so this will be yeah. they, they can uh, install this yeah, yeah. they they have to install and they can work. right now what you can see here sir has used only one time mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it will take time to adjust correct, this and all correct, correct. so you can check it check it out here he has navigated everything Very even smart septic tank it requires lesser maintenance and cost compared to your concrete tanks it's made of metal so the edges are all welded together this eliminates the risk of leakage of sewage which is toxic and hazardous and can contaminate soil and water and cause disease this tank is not connected to external sewer line neither does it need to be sucked out every year because it's a sewage treatment plant within itself it treats all the sewage and doesn't need to be taken out to a external plant There's many households and even hotels and stuff. They leave their sewage into the water bodies, con contaminating. So uh, du that's during rainy season. So basically, uh, we made this prototype. Uh, so I'll, I'll explain you the process to you. Okay. So the human waste enters from here. Okay. Uh, this pipe is connected to that, so it goes in uh, inside this mesh. So uh, this mesh. Um, Separates uh, water from the solid material. Okay, can you see the pipe here? Correct. From here, water um, passes to the next tank. Mm. This is a settling tank. Okay. We give around two hours for the, uh, the look. Now, in case some particles still uh, pass on with water, they're going to settle in this tank. Okay, now there's an outlet below that for that. Okay, so yeah, so uh, even whatever settles can be used as manure mm. for plants and stuff. After that, the water is going to um, Pass to the next tank. That's the purification tank, uh, which we have used charcoal in uh, as active carbon, uh, yeah, to uh, to um, absorb all the impurities. It it won't um, purify the water at much extent, but uh, at extent where we can use it, but it can be used to uh, water plants, uh, yeah, gardening as well. So the last thing. Now we thought because uh, during rainy season and all, all our septic tanks and all they get filled up, yeah. So during that time. We added an eater. Okay, that's a discharge tank. That's going to eat up the water, and the water is going to evaporate, okay. emptying the tank. So, Operating. yeah. Okay. So now, if you are, now you'll say where the solid waste goes. Now will be uh, uh, so bacteria named um, bes uh, E. coli. Yeah, Bacillus and E. coli. They break down the solid material. It's already there inside us, but by the time it comes, it's dead. So it's available in algae and stuff. So we can algae is available anywhere. It's like natural source in lakes and stuff. That algae can be used uh, to you need to put that. Uh, it's like flush it down. Okay. okay, you don't have to put it in the tank. You just flush it down. Okay, so uh, main it should reach the tank. Okay, uh, so that bacteria is gonna break down the soil material. So then it's gonna go to the next tank. Where it's gonna settle uh, as it becomes one. Uh, as I told you, it can be used for many. So, so uh, now this is yeah. a miniature, like this is a prototype. prototype. So for now, what is that higher side of it? So no, for, for I'll tell you. So now this is a prototype. This is a uh, this the total volume of it is 110 liter. Can be used for five. So the main the reason for now for this prototype is can be used for caravans. Uh, then. Uh, Cross state buses, uh, okay. So they have a storage unit. This can be used to treat directly there. No, they don't have to discharge wherever they stop. So it's going to treat it there. Ships and yeah, ships and all. So here, yeah, this charcoal, it has a total period of uh, six months. It, it has to be changed in six months. So for six months, it's fine. Okay. So now, if you need for something week, like now, okay, you can take uh, up to five people's wage for the week. This one, okay. We are obliged to this institution because rarely children have got such a nice chance to see the technology 
related to mechanical system, electronic system, elect electrical system, etc. In a school, we have very little system, small system. But here in this beautiful, wonderful college, we have an exposure to a lot of things and it will motivate the children to learn for future. Definitely, many of our children will come to join engineering system. Uh, Padre Kansa College of Engineering is uh, one of the most reputed engineering colleges in Goa. And we cannot be left behind in uh, encouraging innovations. So this uh, concept that is showcased here in this ideas competition is encouraging students to innovate and possibly go ahead with and come up with startups. So it is encouraging entrepreneurship basically and our faculty who are highly uh, talented themselves and highly uh, competent have guided the students. So each project had a faculty guide and they've done a very good job I can say they have worked very hard the guides have worked very hard and the students also have worked very hard over the past few months to come up with this ideas competition and we have invited schools also to come and have a look at it because it should not be only uh, gain for our students we like students from other places also other schools higher secondaries to come and have a look so that they can also get encouraged it's not only for PCC as such and I'd like uh, to encourage more people, more schools to come over in future and witness these uh, projects which are being showcased by our students. Seeing the students of the second year and third year, I mean, it was fantastic what they have presented and it was definitely a great experience to judge them. Yeah, that's it. yeah we are going to have a hard time actually judging uh, all this event, you know, so that's our next challenge. Uh, Yes, uh, so the management has done a really good job uh, about this. So uh, we were talking to the principal in the morning. So he was saying this is the second time they have done it. And it's really good. So second year students, third year students, they are getting the platform to do, uh, you know, we, what we couldn't do when we were in college. So they have done really well. And I know that the future generations or the next year students are going to come will be doing even better. So was it a Shark Tank experience for you all? Totally. Uh, it was a Shark Tank experience. Only I wish we were sharks. We, were we could actually <laughs> contribute some money towards uh, putting some of these ideas in place. But, you know, uh, one of the things that I was going to propose to uh, uh, the college was if there are some, there are some very, very promising commercially viable ideas. So if there's a mentorship structure that college wants to put in, I'll be happy to sign up as a mentor. And hopefully through your channel, I would... Uh, request people to come forward as mentors who can guide these students to commercialize some of these applications. There are some brilliant ideas uh, within the entire ecosystem and I'd love for people to come forward and contribute back to the education within Go. So while we come to an end of this wonderful journey of techno session ideas, let's wind up with a positive note of get going with ideas of time and technology. Take care.